This is E, and welcome to Video Game Retrospective, where I take a look back at some games in my collection. This time we're looking at Jet Set Radio for the Sega Dreamcast. The original US release actually was called Jet Grind Radio because uh, there were some issues with the naming rights in North America, but for the uh, HD re-release, the name has been changed back to Jet Set Radio. And like I said, the game was recently re-released for the Xbox Live Arcade, the PlayStation Network, as well as mobile devices, but I am playing this on the Dreamcast. So first, let's go over the basics. There's never been a game quite like Jet Set Radio. You play as a gang of rollerbladers called the GGs, or the Rudies, depending on the translation, who must protect their territory from rival gangs and evil corporations by spraying graffiti. I know that sounds kind of weird, but it makes sense in the context of the game. Next, let's go over the development cycle. The game was developed by Sega's in-house dev team known as Smilebit, and it was released in the year 2000 in Japan. The US release contained two new maps and some new songs by more western artists like Rob Zombie and Mixmaster Mike. Yeah, those guys were actually pretty relevant in the year 2000. Rob Zombie is making movies now, I don't know where Mixmaster Mike is. Uh, the DC version of the game has a 91.9% .9 rating on Game Rankings, a review aggregator. Next, let's talk about the plot. Jet Set Radio's plot is campy and it never takes itself too seriously. The developers clearly realized how absurd the plot was and they had some fun with it. You play as a rollerblader gang whose home base is located in the Shibuya district of Tokyo. The game is narrated by DJ Professor K who runs an underground radio station. There are three other gangs in Tokyo To, the Love Shockers, the Poison Jam, and the Noise Tanks who start tagging your turf with graffiti, and one of them even kidnaps your dog. So, it's up to you to tag over your rival's graffiti with your own in order to reclaim your turf. Meanwhile, Captain Onishima and his police force are trying to nab you because, well, you are defacing public property. Things start getting interesting as the head of an evil corporation, Goji Rokaku, starts meddling with the rollerblade gangs in a quest for immortality. Uh, essentially, he thinks that he needs to collect pieces of a broken record, and when he combines these pieces, uh, he will somehow gain uh, the power of immortality. Yeah, I, don't ask me how that makes sense, but that's the plot of the story. But overall, you know, the zany plot fits well with the atmosphere of the game. Everything's really bright, colorful, um, the fast arcade style gameplay and, and awesome electronic music really really helps contribute to the atmosphere and this is not one of those games you play to advance the plot necessarily, let's just put it that way. Next let's talk about the game world. The levels are actually pretty small but they're filled with really intricate details. The graphics and soundtrack of Jet Set Radio were top notch when they were first released and they it still holds up pretty well today, which is more than you can say for most of the games during that generation. Jet Set Radio used an innovative technique known as cell shading, which allowed for cartoon-like appearances in 3D rendered objects. It was also one of the first games to have a fully-fledged soundtrack. It has about uh, over 30 songs in the original DC soundtrack. And it's also got some light elements of interactivity that just wasn't possible in previous generations of games. So you'll get plenty of pedestrians, vehicles, and things that you can knock over throughout the level. I also have to mention the soundtrack again because I'm totally in love with the distinctly Japanese mix of techno, rock, hip-hop, and electronica. If you don't like Jet Set Radio's soundtrack, then I don't think we can ever be friends. Seriously. You could collect icons around the levels to unlock new graffiti images which were made by real graffiti artists. You could also create your own graffiti using the basic letter editor, which was mildly interesting. Jet Set Radio does a great job of, you know, essentially recycling its levels, even though that sounds like a bad thing, you know, it's actually, they do a really good job of, of creating this illusion. 
and you will play through some levels multiple times, but it never gets old because your objectives are different. And when you get to chapter 3 and you find out that three of the smaller levels in each city combine to form one large interconnected level, it's totally cool. Blows your mind. Trust me. Next, let's talk about the core mechanics. The game is pretty simple. There's a jump button, a sprint button, and a button that does double duty by controlling the camera and acting as your spray button. You automatically grind on any railing type surface that you can land on, and the tricks that you perform are automatic when you jump. The game will perform the tricks based on your speed when you hit that jump button. There are three types of levels in the game. The first is a tag type level, where you have to cover over graffiti around the city with your own. You collect graffiti cans before you can spray graffiti, and there are three different types of graffiti. Small ones that you can cover in one spray, and medium and large ones that take multiple sprays and put you into a little mini game where you have to move your thumbstick in the direction given in the instructions on your screen. Once you tag a certain amount of, gra of graffiti in a level, the police will come, or in later levels, the police will be replaced by the evil henchmen of the Rokaku group, who comes Depends on the level, you'll get anything from patrolmen to canine dogs to attack helicopters. You also have a time limit, and you are ranked based on completion time, graffiti tags, remaining health, and remaining graffiti cans. Getting the highest level, which is called Jet, unlocks a bunch of secret characters for you. You can watch some of my other Jet Set radio videos for a walkthrough, the link will be in the description of this video. The second type of level is a challenge or chase level where you're either racing against one AI character or you're following the actions that they perform on screen. They might do something like grind on this rail, jump, grind on another rail, you know, something like that. And these levels will also unlock new characters for you once you complete them. The third type of level is an extended chase level where you have to chase and spray rival gang members with graffiti and essentially you, you spray their back and once you spray their back 10 times they become quote unquote defeated. There is one boss level at the end. It's pretty well designed but it's actually relatively simple to beat and not very interactive unfortunately. There are some really cool looking dino dolls that attack you but they only appear when you are spraying graffiti so imagine if those dino dolls actually were able to chase you throughout the level and you could spray them in the back to destroy them. But unfortunately it was not to be, they really don't do much and uh, the only way you really fail the, the final boss battle is if you run out of time. Each of the main and unlockable characters have different stats. Some have more health, better technique, or give you more points when tagging medium and large pieces of graffiti. If there's one major downfall in Jet Set Radio, it's the physics, engine, and camera. Compared to a game like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, which was also released in the year 2000, navigating around at top speed is way more frustrating than it should be. When you play a game like Tony Hawk, um, or for a more modern reference, climbing and jumping across buildings in Assassin's Creed, the game engine is able to determine, oh hey, the player is trying to make this jump, but their angle is slightly off, let's help them out, let's, let's help them make that jump. Jet Set Radio is not so good at helping the player out in this respect, and your character's momentum is not nearly as fluid as it is in something like Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which I keep going back to because it's a really, really good example of fluid movement in an action sports game. Also, you can't pan the camera, only reset it behind your back. This is more of a fault of the DC controller, which only has one analog thumbstick, not two. And you know, mid-air adjustments in Jet Set Radio are not very flexible, and oftentimes if you end up jumping, um, you force yourself into a weird angle and it's very very hard to recover and you'll miss a lot of jumps just because you, you didn't even start it off on the right foot so finally if you ever end up getting hit by a car a lot of times you'll land on the roof of that car and you'll be stuck in this animation where you get up really slowly 
and if you happen to be near the exit of a level sometimes you'll get bumped up on the roof of a car the car will drive off the level and you'll be forced to restart the whole thing again which is really really frustrating but you know overall considering the game was released in the year 2000 some of these some of these things are understandable finally let's talk about the legacy Jet Set Radio had relatively low sales in the US, possibly due to its crooky nature, but it's become a cult classic, enough that, you know, Sega's released an HD version recently. And I consider it one of my favorite Dreamcast games. A sequel was released for the Xbox two years later, called Jet Set Radio Future. They made everything bigger and prettier, but the graffiti mechanics were dumbed down, which I could not forgive. Cell shading was one of the big breakthroughs that came out of Jet Set Radio, and many games have since used this technique to stylize their graphics. Borderlands and Valkyria Chronicles are good examples of this from you know, the PS3 slash Xbox 360 generation. Overall, Jet Set Radio's graphics age really well with only the controls and the physics engine that really show their age. Jet Set Radio is not a game that's easily duplicable, so any chance of seeing a game that is even remotely close to Jet Set Radio will have to come directly from Sega. And let's put it this way, another developer isn't really likely to, to copy Jet Set Radio's gameplay, especially given the lukewarm sales of the first two games, it's almost impossible that we'll see a full $60 release of a proper third game. You know, the HD re-release doesn't really count. I, I doubt they'd try to make an original version and price it at a full 60 bucks. So that's, that's the end of my retrospective of Jet Set Radio. If you stuck with me for the entirety of the video, please leave a thumbs up and feel free to subscribe to my channel. Now we'll see you guys in the next one.